whoever wins this match will be guaranteed to lock up a spot into top eight. Reagan sitting at 35 match points. Cyrus on the right sitting at 34 match points. And he will be playing the Roaring Moon Dudunsparce deck. I'm extremely excited to see this in action, Pablo. This was my favorite deck, I think, coming out of EUIC. I agree. I absolutely love, love, love Roaring Moon. And now it's found a new partner with the Dunspars and the non-rule box Roaring Moon as well for fantastic support. And I think the, Dun the, the Dunspars engine is one of the most unique support Pokemon that we have seen so far in the history of the game, honestly. It's always like draw a few extra cards mm. with the Pokemon in play, but sending it back is actually very relevant. And wow, the a prize card for Reagan Chip. A bit of trouble here, Pablo. Two of his three Frigibacks, which normally wouldn't be too bad because you could work with the Hisuian Heavy Ball, but that has also found its way into the prize cards. Oh my, can Reagan like navigate this with only one Baxcalibur? all the time i mean luckily for him the the one of the bridge backs is, is at the very bottom of his prize card yes. so that could be his saving grace depending on cyrus's start but as you're playing against chen pao if you're not able to get ahead quickly knocking out those chin pals, then you want to target down the excalibur and the deck falls apart especially if there's, if there's no backup bridge backs one of the things about this roaring moon deck is that it aims to attack very consistently on its very first turn. So many of the card choices in this list are committed to that, to finding the super quick attack. So there's not a lot of gust in this list. There's one boss's orders, one prime catcher, and one counter catcher. There is also, I believe, a no, there is no pal pad in this list, no actually. So pad. just boss's orders and prime catcher really are going to be Cyrus's only way to be aggressive after a backscalibur. Um, so Reagan may have a chance to to get a little wiggle room there as he is going to kick things off. Starting that Iron Bundle, a really cool tech that he has chosen to play in his list this weekend, and immediately kicks it off with the Nest Ball for the Radiant Greninja. Now, this is definitely something where you check your pri your deck for the first time and you only see one Frigibax and then you immediately are like, well, I probably missed it, right? And then you check again and you're like, uh-oh, <laughs> something's yeah. up. But as you were mentioning, Chip, not a lot of ghosting possibilities for Cyrus overall, but it might just take one to turn things around in this situation. Reagan is playing the Iron Bundle. We saw that he started it. If you look at the lists that made day two at EUIC, it was about 50-50 between which ones played the bundle and which ones did not. What are the matchups where the Iron Bundle can come into play? Why would a Chi and Pao player think of this as an inclusion for their deck? I mean, I'm not sure if there's like very, very specific matchups, but more it's like a good general all-around card. Sure. Uh, maybe a Lowland Vulpix Vista or something that comes sure, into mind sure. that would uh, stop you from attacking, but it's just a good option to sometimes you want to target the one Pokemon they have on the bench, which is so much more crucial than whatever they have active. And, I mean, and similarly as well to Cyr Cyrus's deck, Reagan does not have very much gust in his yeah, list. He's exactly. got the Prime Catcher and then has a Silene actually as well as a way <laughs> to potentially reuse the Prime Catcher. So even though Bundle is not quite the same as Gust, sometimes all you want to do is push your opponent's active out of the you know active spot. Something like a Charizard EX that has a lot of HP that you can't get over otherwise. Now, Reagan has played the Ultra Ball, does find a Frigibax, his one single copy of Frigibax, and that will be it. A little bit of a lackluster turn from Reagan, no Bidoof on the bench. And Cyrus has a pretty solid opening here with the Nest Ball. I think another one to accompany it as well with the Darkness Energy. We'll probably see a Concealed Cards, and his goal here will be to attack on turn one with Roaring Moon. And coincidentally, Chip, Cyrus top decked that Prime Catcher. We're talking about how many options or lack of options there are as compared to we've talked about how decks improved or not improved from rotation and these sort of decks used to feature four pokemon catcher but now with a guaranteed prime catcher they're adapting they're saving a little bit of space in some situations but that prime catcher could come crucial and there's a dark patch there's an energy i think we might see that snipe on turn one which is going to be really harsh for Reagan here. And this is a spot where it would be excellent even without Cyrus knowing for sure that Reagan has prized multiple Frigibacks just because it is, regardless of that fact, the only Frigibacks in play. And if you, as Cyrus, take out that Frigibacks, Reagan just will not have very many plays on the next turn. Cyrus also has a Trekking Shoes, I believe, in this hand. Can be a nice extra card to get through the deck. I think the only thing he's missing to pull off this attack is potentially another Darkness Energy. He's got the one that he can use with the Concealed cards. That combos with the Dark Patch. 
But with the two cards he'll draw, plus the Trekking Shoes, he has a lot of ways to get Darkness Energy. Not just the energies themselves, but also the four copies of Earthen Vessel. Exactly. A lot of dig available for this particular turn. And the perfect sequencing is to wait until you've seen all the cards and then determine what you're going to do, right? So we'll see what choices Cyrus gets. And there's a second energy. So already Cyrus in a fantastic spot. I mean, even if Reagan hadn't placed multiple Frigibacks because he only benched one, right. Cyrus, this is always Cyrus's best play here. Cyrus does have a bit of a choice here. Can go for the Sadas or the Explorers as a supporter card. What do you like here, Pablo? I think I like, yeah, the Explorer because you, you're not getting maximum value of the Professor Sada and Professor Sada pairing up double Roaring Mooney X is usually your preferred choice and you have enough to take down the Frigibax. So I really like the Explorer. Give yourself more options, dig through the deck a little bit deeper and Cyrus in a fantastic, fantastic spot chip. And I think this shows the power of the Prime Catcher, right? You can play a supporter and still cost. That is so, so powerful. Yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing this turn play out. Cyrus going to be in a commanding spot. Also was able to find a Dunsparce to get set up. Reagan just kind of having, having to nod his head and accept his fate as this Frigibax is going down. Roaring Moon takes the KO. Oof. Almost draws a card for turn. Nope, we got to <laughs> take those prize cards. Those are not the prize cards. <laughs> <laughs> Do not draw that card, Cyrus. And now Reagan definitely on the back foot here. He does have a pretty decent hand with double Irida. Normally yeah. that could get something like Buddy Poffin, get yourself a couple Frigibacks, but... That's not going to happen here, right, Pablo? Right. Under normal circumstances, you'd be okay-ish. You know you're going to fall behind a little bit to this very aggressive deck. <laughs> but in Reagan's current situation, with the prizes, what they are, I'm not sure. I mean, you have to dedicate okay. the Supra. You get the Buffin to get back that Frigibax, right? And that's one less uh, costing effect that Cyrus now has to try and pick it off again. Yeah, I think Reagan can maybe stick this out for one more turn, right? See if he can get a Backscalibur into play next turn. Uh, was able to make a pretty good decision there, I think, to use the concealed cards before using the Irida. Let himself see what he draws. If he draws into Super yep. Odd, then he can Irida for the Poffin, vice versa as well. So since he drew the Poffin, now I totally expect to see this Irida find a Super Odd. Now he has already discarded a Super Odd to start things off. He is playing three copies of that recovery option in his list this weekend, but having to burn two of them in the first two turns is not usually what you want to do as Chi Pao. Certainly not, Chip. And that's another change that we have seen from Chen Pao pre-rotation to this post-rotation format. Now that there's no more cross-switchers, that does open up a little bit of space for the Chen Pao deck. And why not play more recovery, right? Your Backscalibers continually go down. Your Frigibaxes continually get hunted down. Therefore, having that little bit of extra recovery definitely helps. Irida finding the Chien Pao EX and a Super Rod. Reagan does also have his own Prime Catcher in his hand currently. Something that he could do, you know, Reagan's a pretty smart player and is definitely aware of the meta, is he could try to stick this Roaring Moon active for a turn, right? Yeah, that definitely could be an option. If you have studied the EUIC results and you know what possible options your opponent could have based on the top eight deck list, then you could assume that there's a lack of switching cards in the deck other than a copy of Penny, right? But yes. them having that Prime Catcher on turn one and having the Penny on turn two is going to be very difficult. So that could buy Reagan the time he needs in order to come back into this game. Yeah, of course, the list that has become normalized is the list that Mark Hallstrom used to get eighth, uh, top eight at EUIC. And Cyrus is playing a list that's only two cards different from that top eight list. He's got a Temple of Sinnoh in here, as opposed to an Artisan, which is a tech we've seen pop up, people being a little afraid of the Mist Energy, and also added a second Super Rod, as opposed to the third copy of the Roaring Moon. And Reagan has gone for this play, sticking this Roaring Moon EX in the active, and Cyrus really will only have a couple of options to get this out of the active. Of course, that Penny you mentioned. Also, Sada plus an attachment could technically get there, right? Yeah that would allow Cyrus to retreat, but this is not a dedicated ancient box deck, yes. right? So uh, it's a little early, and even if we were in the late game, it's not guaranteed that the Roaring Moon would be able to get enough ancient cards in the discard pile to be able to KO this Chen Pao. So this might buy Reagan just enough time to pull this off, as the Prime Catcher itself is another switching card that is now no longer available. 
We do see Cyrus has that Professor Sada and will get full value from it. Attaching two Darkness Energy to two Ancient Pokemon and drawing three cards. There is that Da Dun Sparse <laughs> being drawn for the turn. And I do believe there is a, nope. oh, that's not an Ancient Booster Energy <laughs> Capsule, but there is one being attached to the Roaring Moon. And there is a Darkness Energy in hand, so Cyrus was able to find a way to get this Roaring Moon EX out of the active spot. But I think he would need 15 Ancient cards in the discard pile. We're not quite there yet, Pablo. Not quite there yet, as your math does check out, Chip. And I love that Ancient Booster Capsule here, giving 200 HP total to Roaring Moon. That means Chen Pao needs four energy just to take a single prize card. That's a full superior energy retrieval. And that's generally if you're continually having to use so many resources to take a knockout, all of a sudden, the, the resources get very, very intensive for the Qian Pao player. And Regan here with an interesting hand, a pair of Irida, a couple of energy cards, and superior energy retrieval. Kicks things off with that shivery chill on Qian Pao EX, searching the deck for two basic water energy and adding them to the hand. As Regan here with uh, Irida, you've got lots of options here. What would you like to see from Regan as far as his sequencing on this turn? I mean, definitely try to get uh, or see what you draw off of Radiant Greninja because other than the Rare Candy of Excalibur, you probably need other resources for later in the match. Therefore, you use concealed cards to see the unknown cards, right? And then once you see those options, then you can determine what else you're missing and directly search for it with the Irida. Sure. Yeah, for example, if he draws a rare candy here. He can now Irida for maybe an Ultra Ball to try to establish Bibro, which would be another strong option this turn. Here's that Concealed Cards 2 being drawn from the top, and there is that Backscalibur. Probably not one of the two pieces he yep. would have loved to have find, but now Irida can grab some other water Pokemon out of the deck. Yeah, which also helps you thin, right? So it's not bad at all having that backup Chin Pao as well for the incoming next Roaring Moon. And now Regan is a little bit behind in the price race at this point in time will or should be able to take this knockout, and then the Chen Pao will probably go down. But speaking of resource intensive, Cyrus doesn't have infinite Professor Sada's vitality, right? And right now, this Roaring Moon can't really attack unless there's a Sada plus Dark Patch or double Dark Patch. And the more resources you ask your opponent to have during their turn, the better it will be for you, or the higher chance that they will not have exactly what they need. Is there ever any argument to use the Iron Bundle here, potentially? Or do you just get through this Roaring Moon? It looks like that will be Reagan's call. Four energy being discarded to the Hail Blade, and one of those Frigibacks found off of the prizes. Reagan perhaps holding his breath in this spot, hoping that Backscalibur does not go down. He was not able to load any extra energy cards in to play. Cyrus has that Professor Sada, will get solid value here, an energy card, a piece to the Roaring Moon and the Roaring Moon EX. Now three cards found from the top, does find yet another Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. We have seen quite a lack of Dunsparce so far from Cyrus. Just the one and he has not even used it. Yeah, just the one has access to that, the Dunsparce, in case he does need something else. But so far Cyrus has drawn enough and I think that's something important to talk about for the Dawn Spars is that just because you can use it doesn't mean you have to. It's really great backup for when you really need something specific. That's when you go allowed to find those resources or to also help protect from potential Ionos, Roxans, or even judges from your opponent, which if you're knowledgeable about Chen Pao decks, you know that at most you're probably facing down one Iono, if that. Vengeance, fletching, seeking vengeance for the fallen brethren from last turn, the roaring moon that fell previously. Cyrus jumping back ahead in the prize trade. Three prizes now to Reagan Retzlov's five. We'll see how he can navigate his way through this situation. Once again, a roaring moon in the active with a ancient booster energy capsule up to 200 HP. No really strong way to deal with this Pokemon except for throwing a Chien Pao EX at it. Indeed, and... That's a lot of energies required, Chip. That's probably another superior energy retrieval needed. And once you do, your reward is only one prize card. And then what are you going to do when this Roaring Moon comes up and potentially takes your Chen Pao down, leaving Cyrus to one prize card? So Cyrus with a really big advantage at this moment. And Reagan, it's like you can't even try to trap the Dodonspar somehow, even with Silene, because the Dodonspar's ability 
can be used from the active spot. So it's looking really difficult for Reagan to come back into this. Needs a big whiff off of Cyrus, who has very properly conserved the taunt sparse for that dig he might need. A pretty solid draw off the concealed cards. Reagan was able to find Biberel. Super important piece of this Chim Pao deck. Honestly, nearly as important as Backscalibur yep. itself, drawing you up to five cards every single turn. Three cards found off this Industrious Incisors. Reagan has not played a supporter, so has the option between Irida or Silene. I don't think there's anything that he wants to get back right now, but Irida can help to establish his board a little bit more and also find that superior that he needs to pull off this attack. Yeah, could be superior. Could also be Supra to put energies back into the deck and then Shiver Chill them back into play. Regan does have both options, but it's a little too late, I feel, only taking one prize card. This is one of Chin Pao's biggest weaknesses, right? Having to deal with those multiple one prize attackers with your two prize attacker, which is generally the only Pokemon you have to attack with because with Roaring Moon sitting at 140 or 200 HP, Iron Hands is just not a good asset for you in this match. And the only supporters that Reagan plays are the four copies of Irida, the one Silene that we've mentioned, and then also two copies, two copies of Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking. So no copies of the Iono that we have seen in the past from Chi and Pao decks. Perhaps if Reagan had Iono hanging around, there would be a chance for him to come back in this game, get a little bit of disruption, and hope that Cyrus doesn't draw what he needs off of the Dadun Sparse. But that's not a play that's available to Reagan in this spot. He was able to find the superior energy retrieval, just debating which cards to discard here. It looks like Chin Pao and perhaps a Buddy Buddy Poffin. No, we'll think better of it hanging on to the Chien Pao EX and actually discarding a rare candy to get up to four basic energy back from the discard pile. Exactly, four right there available. So we'll be able to take this knockout, can power up something else if he needs to, has a lot of energies in hand, but needs to hope that Cyrus doesn't have access to another Professor Sada and her attachment or a double Dark Patch, which can combo very nicely with the Dunsparce coming into the active. Yep. Then you get to Dark Patch, then you get to Shuffle back, and you're ready to go. So the Dunsparce acting like a very nice pivot, and I think that's what we're going to see here, Chip. Yes, exactly what we're going to see. That runaway draw, such a cool and unique ability, and Cyrus has so many options available. Multiple Dark Patch, Professor Sada as well, even another Roaring Moon. I think there's a chance that Cyrus could even set up a checkmate yep. from this position. I agree, Chip. I think he's very, very close. If he was able to set up two Roaring Moons, then there's nothing stopping uh, Cyrus from taking a KO, even if he had a zero card hand, right? Now, Cyrus will still try to establish one baby Roaring Moon, small Roaring Moon, Roaring Moon Junior, whatever you want to call <laughs> non -ruled him. Non-ruled box non -ruled. Roaring Moon. That's yeah. so difficult to say, though. <laughs> We're not saying that one. <laughs> Plenty of dark energy in the discard pile. I believe Professor Sada already lined up to the front of the hand. So not choosing to establish the second Moon EX. Perhaps couldn't have gotten all three energy on that card right now. I think he could have, because he does have another Dark Patch and an Attachment in hand. But either way, he's in a fantastic spot, and he might not know it. I feel like I would like to see him, as you mentioned, like play more towards... You don't know your opponent's exact 60. There's always a possibility of an Iono. So having those two Roaring Moons would yes. be more than good enough, because I don't think there's 15 cards in the discard pile for Roaring Moon, uh, for the non rule box Roaring Moon to threaten an upcoming Chen Pao in this case. Cyrus does have Ultra Ball in hand. We'll use Runaway Draw first, drawing the three cards, and then now shuffling the Dadun Sparse back into the deck. Really cool the way that ability works from the active position because you get to see what cards you draw first before you have to shuffle in. So you get to see what you draw before you even have to choose what to promote. Obviously, in this position, Roaring Moon EX was always coming into the active spot. And I was going to say the one thing Cyrus is missing from this position is the Stadium card so that he can utilize Calamity Storm as opposed to the Fringy Gouging. But he's got it hanging on in the hand, able to put it in play and able to grab another Dunsparce into play. Yep, Artisan, a pretty fantastic resource with the Dunsparce, allowing you to get back the Dunsparce that you just put back into the deck. Also comboing perfectly with Calamity Storm, as you mentioned, to take this very clean one hit KO. Leave yourself with a Pokemon that requires four more energies to take down. But if only this Roaring Moon was an EX instead of this one chip, 
I think Cyrus would pretty much have this game completely locked up. So far, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, ten ancient cards in the lost zone. I mean, in the discard pile, if the Roaring Moon goes down, that's 11, but that's still four more. Cyrus will need to KO the upcoming Qian Pao here. I think Cyrus had Ultra Ball in hand, had some other ancient cards, had an Earthen Vessel. Maybe could have played a couple more of those just in case an Iono came through from Reagan. But Cyrus also could be having some list knowledge playing to his benefit here. These players have been up at the top couple tables for the whole tournament. They've probably played next to each other. Perhaps they even played in day one of Swiss. So Cyrus able to perhaps utilize some of that information to the advantage here, knowing Reagan does not have Iono. That's something that he could certainly be working with. Now, Reagan has promoted the Radiant Greninja. A pair of energy cards on that Pokemon will utilize concealed cards, discarding the basic lightning energy, hoping for some help here. His only chance is to stick a Qian Pao EX in the active spot and cross his fingers that Cyrus has no way to respond. That's a big hope. Mathematically, it's possible. <laughs> Realistically, it's probably not happening. Uh, do think it's a, a big opportunity or a big missed opportunity for Cyrus not to just have that backup Roaring Moon ready to go in this situation. But Regan's going to try and make the best use out of this. Maybe this is where you, Silene, tried to get the Prime Catcher to Greninja multiple times. I just, I don't think so with Cyrus's humongous hand. 12 cards in hand, I believe, Chip. Super unlikely, but. Got to play to your outs or, or decide yeah, or decide to move on to the next game. For now, though, Reagan will choose to hang on for just a bit longer, playing three energy cards back into the deck from this Super Rod. Has not used Bibarel just yet, still tapped from the last turn, and does just have that one card remaining in the hand. It is the Silene. Do you think that's worth playing right now, Pablo? I mean, honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, getting back the Prime Catcher, what else could you possibly want? I mean, you have the Iron Bundle still left to be used. If there was a way for her to make Iron Hands do more damage somehow, sure. I just, I, I'm not seeing what the play here is yeah. for Reagan. Reagan's going to swing with this Chien Pao, cross his fingers that Cyrus can't get the KO. And if Cyrus can't get the KO, Reagan could respond with the Chien Pao to close out the game, right? Yeah. He could totally do that. That's, I think, the line that he's thinking for here. Here comes that Silene. A couple of flips coming in here. One heads and a tails. Going 50-50 on that supporter card. Now, any card from Reagan's discard pile, he'll be able to grab and place back on top of the deck. And Prime Catcher will be the choice. One of the few ways you can reuse multiple A specs. But Reagan, seeing that even with the Prime Catcher, it's super unlikely he'll hold on. Decides to concede. We're going to have to go to game two. Cyrus gets the win in that first one. Yep, might have asked Harris. Do you have energy <laughs> to retreat that Greninja? But yeah, not a great spot for Reagan at that point in time. Just fell a little too far behind. And honestly, the Frigi backs being prized didn't really come into play because Reagan didn't even have an opportunity to bench two on the first turn. It's not like he missed that opportunity at all. So not the biggest of deals thankfully those prizes but overall the aggression and the pace of cyrus's deck proved to be too much to handle for reagan and it was that aggression the turn one prime catcher play taking out reagan's one frigibax and really from there is where things started to fall apart reagan was able to get that turn three back scalibur after finding a frigibax was able to try to claw back into the game, but it was really just too little too late. Cyrus was ahead on the prize trade and as a single prize attacking deck with, you know, the two prize option in the end game, it's really difficult to lose whenever you find yourself that far ahead and your opponent has no disruption. Indeed, and with the back of the Dawn's forces, it just, it wasn't really easy for Reagan to make up the advantage that Cyrus was able to get from the very beginning. Definitely a lucky strike to have that Prime Catcher readily available on your first turn, even when you only play one copy and you're not digging through the deck that that much. But that is what can happen in the game of Pokemon. Cyrus rocking the Hawaiian lay there, perhaps <laughs> signaling to the future for Worlds in Hawaii. Prize cards now going out for these players. Radiant Greninja in the prizes for both of them. And Cyrus has prized the Prime Catcher, so will not be able to have that early aggression we saw in game number one. It is a card that is at the bottom of the prizes, however, so more than likely he'll be able to utilize it 
pretty early in the game if he would like. Reagan Retzloff kicking things off with a Chien Pao EX in the active, immediately searching the deck thanks to that Shivery Chill ability. Did not get a look at the hand just yet. He'll certainly be hoping to get down a Frigibax, Badoof, and perhaps Radiant Greninja. Perhaps if only it were available, Chip. I think the Radiant Greninja being priced is probably more impactful for Cyrus than Reagan overall. Reagan, of course, would love to get those extra cards, but has the backup B Brill. Whereas Cyrus, the best way he can get energies into a discard pile and extra resources is that concealed card's ability. So it being priced is going to be very problematic and could actually uh, slow him down just enough for Reagan to run away with this one. Pretty solid hand here. A pair of Frigibacks. Also, Nest Ball. This can find the Bidoof. I think there is an Ultra Ball in the hand as well for the next turn. In order to get Bibrel in play, in order to draw through the deck, find yourself some combo pieces in order to piece together exactly what you need. No, was it not a Frigibax in his hand? Oh, perhaps the Iron Bundle was that other water Pokemon I noticed. Yeah, I do believe so. And I think this is always something that you need to be very aware of your opponent's capabilities and what they can do. And you, you want to play it super, super safe. In this case, as Reagan, he'd rather have the double Frigibax in case one of them does go down yep. in that first turn, just like last game, as opposed to having the reliability of Bidoof. But, of course, that's going to cost him, right? That means his hand could be a little limited in that regard in the upcoming turn. So setting up that Bidoof and the b is still a priority, but you first need to play it a little bit safer in this instance. Pair of Frigibax into play. And then the attachment to this Chien Pao has the Ultra Ball, but will choose to hold on to it for now, passing it back over to Cyrus McCain. Cyrus has started a Roaring Moon, also playing a Nest Ball here. Would maybe be thinking of grabbing the Radiant Greninja in this spot, but as we have called out, it is in the prizes. And this Greninja will be missing in action this time around as he realizes that <laughs> and I think yeah. both the players here are laughing about the fact they have both prized their yep. <laughs> Greninja. <laughs> Which is like, what are the chances of prizing at any given card? It's 10%, right? So if you combine those, both players prizing the exact same card in the same, de in the same game might be a 1% chance if my math doesn't fail me. So... Yep, very peculiar game we are seeing, but like we mentioned, I think it's going to be more impactful for Cyrus overall than for Reagan. Yeah, there's just less ways for Cyrus to discard energy, and it's more important for Cyrus to discard energy than it is for Reagan as well. He needs to utilize those Professor Sadas. Does have the trekking shoes. Perhaps here Cyrus will be crossing his fingers to find a darkness energy on the trekking shoes in order to discard it. He does have the earthen vessel in hand. And using this Artisan is able to find another Dunsparce. Yeah, that Artisan, a blessing for Reagan as well as he will be able to utilize it to establish the Bidoof next turn essentially for free. So I'm sure he's very grateful to Cyrus for playing that down. But Cyrus, with the lack of Greninja, definitely needs to rely a lot more on his Dunsparce engine, which last time around didn't feature as much, but I feel like Based on the current circumstances, with the lack of Greninja, the Dunsparce will play a much bigger role. Trekking Shoes sees the top card. Cyrus choosing to discard the Roaring Moony X and is rewarded by finding a basic Darkness Energy. The perfect thing to discard with the Earthen Vessel. And I think there's a Sada in the hand as well. And if that is the case, we can see the turn one attack would be pretty nice. Indeed, very, very fortunate energy find right there to be able to chain that vessel, discarding the energy, finding more energy, then possibly going into that Professor Sada, as you mentioned, Chip. But I, I don't know if I saw it. If it is, then fantastic. But three cards can sometimes be a little underwhelming. Mm, I don't no, see it, Chip. No, Professor Sada, my eyes deceive me. There is a darkness energy and a dark patch, but no way to get this Roaring Moon out of the active spot and really nowhere for Cyrus to go with this hand even in future turns. That Temple of Sinnoh attack for the potential Mist Energies that people were talking about a little bit this weekend. Good against the Mist Energies in the Charizard deck. Good against the Mist Energies in the Control decks. Cyrus with just a pass, a rare miss on the turn one attack from the Roaring Moon player. You can see how important that Radiant Greninja is. It's one of those cards where you could play multiple copies of. It could easily be a two, three, or four of in some decks, right? It's that powerful, but the Radiant rule does limit it. And 
you like basing your deck around it can factor in in these sort of situations where it ends up being prized and you're left with a pretty underwhelming hand. Reagan uses Shivery Chill immediately, grabbing a couple energy and eyed up the Bidoof. Sure enough, Artisan being utilized in order to grab the little bear from the deck, the little beaver from the deck, and put it directly onto the bench. I believe Reagan has an Irida, correct? So should be able to piece together the Baxcalibur here. Not before potentially drawing cards. Maybe there's a Pokestop in the hand. I'm not sure. Yep, there is indeed a Pokestop, which with what you are seeing from your opponent, I'm not sure you want to play that. Also, it gives them resources, energy discarded. This could have been a little risky because Reagan also prized a Baxcalibur this game. <laughs> if he had milled his Baxcalibur on the Pokestop, that could have been a, a little awkward for him. I think that's the iron bundle oh, there in the his hand. In so his hand. Yeah, I thought that a was little a bit of a risk, if you ask me. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I feel like you would rather play the Irida, get that rare candy back, Excalibur guaranteed, and then pokey stop away to your heart's content. But Reagan uh, factoring in the risk versus reward and choosing to pokey stop right there instead. Even We've getting rid of B-Rolls could have been a yeah, little risky, right? Yeah, could have been tough, yeah. But as it stands, it does work out just fine. Irida finding the rare candy back Excalibur. Name a more iconic duo. <laughs> Here comes the backs into play. And with no ancient booster energy capsule on this Roaring Moon, Reagan will have a little bit easier of a time. A few less resources, one less energy card needed in order to get the KO. And now Reagan finds himself ahead for the very first time in this match. And what a draw for Cyrus. Finds that da Dunsparce is going to be crossing the fingers for a good draw here. Just three cards to do it. Not before using the Pokestop, though. It does Ooh. get rid of a couple supporters. He would have drawn those if he used the Dunsparce first. Those would have been amazing draws for Cyrus if he had used it, the Dunsparce, as you mentioned, Chip. It's always an interesting discussion <laughs> to decide whether you Pokestop first or you the Dunsparce first or draw cards with whatever other right. resource you have. And I think there's always probably a mathematically correct answer, but a lot of the times it just comes down to feeling, right? Yeah, it depends what you're looking for in many spots. And I think in this spot, Cyrus is looking for a supporter. I feel like, sure, if you poke a stop into Nest Ball, Earth and Vessel, you can get some other cards out of your deck to increase your chances for the Dunsparce to hit you a supporter. Oh. But also, you potentially get rid of your supporters, and uh, Cyrus has not found one just yet. I do think found an Ultra Ball, though, so we could see another Da Dunsparce get another runaway draw. So actually did find a supporter, but it's Penny, the sure, most sure. underwhelming supporter in this, <laughs> in this scenario. Um, definitely would have loved a Sada, definitely would have loved a Professor's Guidance, but unfortunately not available here. So Cyrus will be able to do an attack, but at this point in time, if... Your Reagan, your Chen Pao worth two prizes. He's going to be able to take two prizes. So you're trading evenly. You're the one with the initiative. So it's a very comfortable position compared to the last game. It's another world. Absolutely. The Dunsparce being grabbed from the Ultra Ball. Run away draw incoming. And Cyrus here will be hoping perhaps for a supporter. Actually, he's going to choose to hold off on even using the Dunsparce. Has everything he needs to get the attack this turn. Wants to perhaps guarantee some draw for the next one. Hasn't played a supporter yet this turn. I don't know. How do you feel about this, Pablo? I mean, I think it's fine. It also protects the Dunsparce from getting sniped, or the Dunsparce from getting sniped by a potential Radiant Greninja, which Reagan might have unlocked from the prizes at yeah. this point. Also but has Heavy Ball in his list. Has Heavy Ball as well, so decent protection and then you get to see your top deck you also have the pivot right to the side see after seeing your top deck but definitely a dire situation if you're Cyrus and I feel like if both players would like to guarantee their spot in the top eight now potentially picking up his cards might be on Cyrus's mind yeah Reagan here is okay to come away with a tie a tie would get him to 36 match points he'll be able to ID one of these last couple of rounds here and he'll be finding himself in a good spot Cyrus on the other hand probably needs to win one more if he ties this one he could potentially ID next round in order to get to 36 match points but more than likely he'll ha he'll be playing against someone who has 33 match points who needs to play for their shot at top eight yeah, with the tournaments getting this big chip, it's never easy to figure out because we're literally in uncharted territory, right? We've never had day twos this big. We've never had 
players without 35 match points not making it into top 8 like we had at EUIC. So it's always not super straightforward to figure out exactly how many you need or if you're going to risk it based on your resistance. A pretty excellent poke stop there for Reagan, discarding an energy card, but finding two superior energy retrieval. Actually has three copies of the card in his hand currently. Has yet to establish Biberel, and I expect that's what we're going to see here grabbed off this Ultra Ball. Oh, perhaps a Qian Pao. Maybe he wants to attack with a clean Qian Pao, force his opponent to find a gust if he wants to clean up this other Qian Pao that's already been hit. Indeed, it's, if you're this ahead as Reagan, making your opponent need as many cards as possible to even get some prize cards, get some resources, right? Prize cards are resources, and you don't want to just hand your opponent two more. Also, the more the game advances, the more likely it is that there might be enough ancient cards in the discard pile for the upcoming Roaring Moon to get a KO. So the more you make your opponent work for their best possible play, the better it is for you and the more likely you'll come out ahead. Yeah, this is a super smart play here from Reagan. Just needs one more energy card in order to get this KO, which if he doesn't have it in hand, he certainly has the superiors to pull it off. And there are plenty of water energies available. He'll be able to get this one hit knockout. Yeah, plenty of superior energy drills as well, and a super. So all the Pokemon, all the energy and Pokemon recovery Regan could possibly want. Even decide to leave one energy pre-attached to that Chimpao, feeling pretty safe, pretty comfortable. I think if you're Cyrus, time's running out, and he could even get benched out if he doesn't draw any Pokemon with this Teton Spars oh, once and we again. See the same thing. Needs a supporter card, uses Pokestop first, and that supporter gets discarded from the top of the deck. Now off the trekking shoes will discard the Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. Does find a Nest Ball, does thin one more card out. More than likely will grab a Roaring Moon, but is there even another Roaring Moon in the deck? I don't see one. May have to settle for a Dunsparce instead. So this is Cyrus's final Roaring Moon in play at the moment. He does play a couple super odd. He'll need to shuffle a couple back. I want to point out uh, the sequencing. We just saw that Trekking Shoes being played before the Dunsparce. I really wish the Dunsparce had been used before even the Pokestop because with the Dunsparce, you're getting extra resources into your hand, which is extra information, right? And then with the extra cards you have, you can make a more informed decision on those trekking shoes and a more informed decision on whether you need to Pokestop or not. Three cards are drawn here for Cyrus. Does find the Super Rod and able to promote the Dunsparce. One of my favorite things about this little guy, he's got free retreat too. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> uh, interesting. I mean, anytime, you know, anytime a card has free retreat, it just makes it all that much better. Yeah, that free retreat coming in super, super clutch, especially in a deck that needs to power up on the bench through the dark patches, right? So the Dunsparce, it's almost like it was made for this deck. It's a perfect partner for Roaring Moon. So Super Odd will shuffle back into the deck. A couple of Roaring Moon, also one Darkness Energy. There is a Roaring Moon in the prize cards currently for Cyrus. And this does take an ancient Pokemon out of the discard pile, so Vengeance Fletching will do a little bit less damage, but in this position, you were never getting the one-hit knockout anyway. You need 15 Ancient cards in the discard pile in order to get there, and that was not happening this turn. Yeah, now there's 22 total Ancient cards in Cyrus's deck. That means getting almost all of those into a discard pile is really difficult, and I think all these draws are giving Cyrus that sort of, like, false hope in the sense that, sure, he's still in the game, sure, he's getting attacks off, but Regan's just going to come out more and more ahead, and if he's able to close out the game, then, as you mentioned, the tie is definitely preferable for Regan than for Cyrus in this situation. Yeah, Regan even just asked the judge exactly how much time was left, trying to be sure of what is available using this Pokestop. Does discard a few supporters, but finds perhaps the strongest card in his entire deck, that a Spec Prime Catcher. Also having Irida in the hand, Ultra Ball as well. The problem here may be that these cards are a little tough to want to discard. <laughs> He's got yeah. three Superior and Ultra Ball. How, what, which cards can you even choose to discard? I mean, probably the Irida, or with Irida, you're going to grab something like Manaphy and a Puffin just There's, to yeah, discard yeah. them, right? But yeah, Reagan's hand might be too good for his own benefit at this point because you need uh, cards to discard for the Ultra Ball, cards to discard for the Superior. And because the, you have so many Superiors and the Super Rod, you're not going to draw too many cards with the B-Barrel anyways. 
Reagan does choose to find the Hisuian Heavy Ball, perhaps getting the Radiant Greninja from the prizes right now could be a strong play. Could do a couple things here, right? You can draw cards with it. Would you ever consider going for the attack into the Dunsparce? I guess you wouldn't have to because you could always just use the Iron Bundle. Maybe this is a good turn to target that Pokemon down. You know your opponent is struggling to set up, right? Yeah, you can definitely give up two prize cards in exchange for your opponent's draw engine. However, there's definitely merit to getting rid of your opponent's only relevant sure. attacker and threat in play. So both options I actually like. I think both options put you far, far ahead. What I would like to see, though, is um, seeing that Radiant Greninja find extra resources for Reagan as it's probably better in this spot than even the uh, b -Rail. Is debating the superior energy retrieval here, I believe, is going to discard the Ultra Ball to do it, which would be a way to get that b -Rail out of the deck. We'll see what he can draw here from Radiant Greninja. This does at least guarantee that he'll be able to take the KO and we'll see if Cyrus is even able to find the pieces. And uh, we're actually going to see the Radiant Greninja go in for the attack. Yep. Okay, so not using Moonlight Sh or not using the concealed cards here, just going straight for the Moonlight Shuriken. Yeah, I'm not sure I love this play chip because with no backup b -Rail, I mean, there's not much threatening Reagan at this point in time. And the Pokestop probably remaining in play for the foreseeable future. Cyrus has to find a basic Pokemon here. Nope. He didn't. Uh, there yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah, no out to a basic Pokemon. He had no way to find it otherwise. Knew that his active Roaring Moon was going down, and we're going to game number three. What a, like, contrast between game one and game two, right? Game one, Cyrus was flying through his board, didn't even need to use the Dawn Spars, basically, to fully set up, got that turn one aggression, and then game two, Reagan was able to just completely take over and... Prices, once again, didn't really factor too much for Reagan in either game, but that Radiant Greninja being prized for Cyrus definitely slowed him down so, so much. We're going to have right around nine minutes left for this third and final game for one of these players to hopefully lock up a spot into our top eight. And it was all about the aggression here for Reagan. Had a really strong setup and was able to just go in and take the quick prize cards. Yep, I think once you're the one with the initiative, it's usually on your opponent to disrupt you or make something happen. But neither deck offers any disruption, right? Both decks are trying to do their thing. Both decks have their resources and their powerful attackers, but neither can really affect what their opponent is trying to do other than ghosting a potential support Pokemon or a threat. So with both of those scenarios happening, I do think Reagan has the slightly stronger deck in the long run, but a fast start for Cyrus can definitely be problematic for Reagan. Yeah, and I think there is a chance we see this game conclude with a winner. It's going to be tough. Both of these decks, uh, Reagan's mostly, do require a little bit of setup, but we'll see how things develop. Starting this game is going to be a little delayed, however, Cyrus with a mulligan. Now, heading into this game, I think I would like to see Cyrus actually choose to go first. Normally with Roaring Moon, you just kind of choose to go second, pretty much against everything. But I think Chien Pao actually is one of the few decks that you want to go first against. Yeah, honestly, I agree, because it gives you that little bit of extra turn. You're not going to play a supporter. You might not do too, too much, but it gives you that one extra energy attachment, which means you're not reliant on Dark Patch, or you're not reliant on a turn one Professor Sada in order to get that aggression going, which is so, so key to disrupt the Chien Pao player. However, you are giving them the possibility, essentially, to have access to eight total body puffins between the four ear that can search for them and the four actual body puffins. So, uh, it's a little tough to say, but I agree. I would love to see Cyrus choose to go yeah. first here. Yeah, it's an interesting spot. You know your opponent will set up a little bit more, but you also know your opponent will have uh, one less turn to get off an attack. So you're more likely to attack before yep. your opponent, pretty yep. much, right? Which is so Which so I think key, is right? most, the most important piece in this matchup. I mean, Reagan would be much rather go first, right? Yeah. So uh, I think that's another benefit for Cyrus choosing to kick things off here in game number three. And is going to start it off with the Radiant Greninja, but I don't see a Darkness Energy. Does Venture Roaring Moon and now uses Artisan to search the deck for any non-rule box basic Pokemon to put directly onto the bench. Dunsparce immediately being eyed up. Yep, Dunsparce to get that Dunsparce sequencing and combo rolling. 
No energy available, as you mentioned, Chip. And speaking of energy, three energy were priced for Reagan, which in the grand scheme of things could definitely affect things. There's Even though the Chen Pao deck relies so much on attaching so many energies each turn, there's only eight water energies played, and with almost half of those being priced, that could be a little troublesome for Reagan in the beginning. Yeah, Cyrus's hand is not amazing. Does have the Explorer's Guidance to utilize on the next turn, but no energy attachment, no energy in the discard pile. We're now back over to Reagan here with the Buddy Poffin, with the Irida. He has plenty of options available. We'll start off with the Artisan, however. Yeah, also has a hay vault, but this is always an interesting discussion, right? Reagan could have immediately checked his price cards off of the heavy ball, but if you check your deck first and you figure out if there's nothing really too crucial priced in terms of Pokemon, that heavy ball can actually be useful for discarding into an Ultra Ball, into a Superior Energy Tree Ball, so very correct sequencing in that instance for Reagan. Yeah, especially in Qian Pao specifically, because yeah. you have so many cards that you need to discard. I mean, we saw him have kind of a difficult choice in the last game. Had the Ultra Ball in hand, had the Superior Energy Retrievals, and was forced to discard the Ultra Ball to the Superior because he needed the energies more than he needed the Pokemon. And uh, so having access to Heavy Ball as a way to just be an extra card to be discarded can be pretty nice. Now, one thing that's missing in this hand currently for Reagan is there's no energy cards. No way to get Bidoof out of the active, no way to get a Chi and Pow active, which is normally what you want to do in order to get some energies from your deck with Shivery Chill. Let's we'll see if Reagan has that one of Earthen Vessel, potentially. That could be what he goes for. Yep, and that's exactly what he's putting to the front of his deck chip. So, yep, we're, we're seeing with three energies prized, getting those early energies is going to be so, so crucial. And the one piece of information you have as Reagan is that your opponent doesn't have energy. If they had energy, there's no reason not to use concealed cards or at the very least get an attachment onto the board. So this is definitely an opening for Reagan to take advantage of the fact that he didn't get to start, but he did get to play that area to fetch the Earthen Vessel. I'm going to be honest as well here, Pablo. I think there's a decent shot with this hand that we could see Reagan be aggressive with his Iron Hands EX. Not really a card you normally attack with in this matchup. It only deals 120 damage, unable to knock out the Roaring Moon, but it can knock out the Lightning Weak Radiant Greninja. It also can prey on your opponent's Dunsparce, which are very important pieces of their draw engine. So that is something we could potentially see Reagan utilize, and that would be a way that he could swing the prize trade in his favor quickly enough to ensure that this game completes. Certainly, Chip, certainly. You, finding that opportunity to take two prizes with your Iron Hands for a, not a lot of resources, essentially, is very important, and this could be the prime opportunity to do so, as you mentioned, because now, even if Cyrus is able to find energies and whatnot, he will probably need to dedicate his energy attachment to retreat the Radiant Greninja to the bench, meaning getting an attack off could be difficult, and we could see that still stuck in the active given Cyrus's very underwhelming turn one. Also, uh, for Reagan as well, it's pretty low risk to go for the Iron Hands because you're almost guaranteed to at least tie this game. It's going to be very difficult for your opponent to take all their prizes in the remaining time. Yep. So you could at least try to set up the Iron Hands, be aggressive after that line. Already even has Prime Catcher in hand as well with Rare Candy Back Scalibur. There's a decent shot that Reagan can do this. And uh, worst case scenario, if it doesn't work out, if you end up whiffing, you're going to be able to ensure you get the one match point from the tie. Yeah, and Reagan's hand's so good that he's even able to discard that excess rare candy that he has so pretty amazing start for him will be able to also retreat into the Chen Pao get those two energies out as well and now he's he has pretty much uh, well most of his energies because there's so many prices here right yeah just another one remaining in the deck I believe which he'll be able to get out of the deck with Shivery Chill on the next turn Assuming Cyrus does not, in some miracle way, find a way to get 15 ancient cards in the discard pile. I don't even know if that is technically possible. It probably is with Dunsparce, Explorers, Ultra Ball. Like, there's maybe a combo of cards that gets him there, but it's, it's pretty unlikely. Yeah, very, very unlikely. And, yeah, there we go. What Drawing. a top deck. Yeah, it does find that the Dunsparce from the top, so that will be... A way to accelerate. Also, if Cyrus wants to try to play around any Iron Hands shenanigans from Reagan, something he can do is not put another Dunsparce in play, ensure that Reagan can't accelerate the prize trade in his favor in that way. 
Not bad at all. It's very key, as you mentioned, Chip, to try to find those opportunities where you can accelerate your win condition through the use of unorthodox measures, such as the Iron Hand, such as the double KO with Radiant Greninja, which is not unorthodox for a deck like Chin Pao, but it's not always something that a lot of decks have access to. Yeah, and even it for Chien Pao in this matchup, not something you often go for. Cyrus with the draw on the Dunsparce. The Dunsparce still unable to find an energy card. That is the piece that he's missing here. Explorer's Guidance, he would love to discard a Darkness Energy or perhaps find a Vessel in order to get the Radiant Greninja up and rolling. And he does choose to keep the Vessel right away and has a couple of Darkness Energy. can choose to hang on to one to discard or just throw them both away. He does keep that Nest Ball and that Earth and Vessel. Cyrus really not choosing to focus at all on the Roaring Money X in this matchup, but that just is going to give so much more power to the Iron Hands because if the Iron Hands is able to take down this Radiant Greninja, then what response do you have? You're not going to have 16 Ancient cards in the discard already, yeah. and even the the frenzied gouging is your only answer but it's not a great one because you leave yourself vulnerable at 30 hp left where even a frigibax could take down the iron hands. and i think our players here recognizing less than a minute left there's really no way for either of them to take six prize cards reagan would have had to play at lightning speed and also cyrus probably would have had to make a mistake would have had to leave an extra one uh, single prize pokemon in play maybe put a roaring mooney x in play to let reagan take six prizes in three turns so they recognize that's not going to happen. We'll take the tie. And I think that's something Reagan's okay with here. He moves to 36 match points. He's locked up a spot in top eight. Cyrus, though, has a little bit more work to do in this last Swiss round coming up. Indeed, 36 match points could be safe. Could also not be safe as we saw one player bubble out in EUIC. However, when you're off to a solid, solid start here as Regan, you have to assume your assistance pretty good. Obviously, it's just tied against Cyrus, who also is at the very top of the table. So you would imagine Regan might be able to get another ID in the coming round to secure his spot in the biggest regional ever. In game one, it was all about Cyrus's aggression, targeting down Regan's lone Frigibax, the turn one Frigi KO. You don't see it too often, but It'll come up every once in a while. It set Reagan back just a little too far. Perhaps Reagan could have conceded this game one a little quicker, but also it's not necessarily something he was pressured to do because he was okay with a tie, right? Yeah, and that's part of why uh, the points transitioning from day one to day two is so important and knowing how many you're gonna need in order to make the top eight is very, very key. Reagan very aware of that and then was able to take game two honestly very convincingly uh, switching around those Chen Pao's tanking those hits using Greninja as well to eliminate Cyrus's only resource to potentially find him more cards and then the Pokestop failing to provide Cyrus with an extra Pokemon was able to close out the game that way. And here in game three really don't know what would have happened to be honest it seems like Reagan was in a decent spot Cyrus was having kind of a slow time getting going but not enough time to finish that game out. A tie is a tie. One match point awarded to each of the players. And we've only got one Swiss round left. One Swiss round left. And gosh, I really hope it's a clean cut. Yeah, like imagine being so close and then not making it based on resistance. It is pretty crazy Oof. that we are living in the days of 36 match points yep. bubbling out <laughs> of top cut. 35 match points is crazy enough. Uh, but you got to go 12 and 3 or better to have yeah. a chance. To have a chance, exactly. That's the crazy thing. And I feel like we're not too far off where you're going to need to win 13 rounds at this point in time. So these tournaments are getting bigger and bigger, Chip. Not, no more exciting time to play the Pokemon TCG than right now. More and more players getting involved. I've spoken to so many people out on the floor this tournament weekend that are telling me this is their first yep. tournament. Players who didn't even play yes. in the top competition, yes. they're just checking things out, maybe playing in some side events, things like that. There's so much to do at a regional championships outside of just competing in the main event. So if you're ever on the fence, you're thinking about it, we'd love to see you out here. We've got a couple more this season, and I'm sure next season is going to be one to remember as well. Oh, certainly. I'm very excited for that as well. But still plenty to play for in this season, two regionals remaining after this one.